Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Hilda, and uh, like Haley said, I am a Teach from Malaysia fellow, and I'm also placed in a trust school in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I teach Sajara, uh, history, and English as well for Form 2 students. So it's only my second year um, as a teacher, a very fresh teacher, um, but I'm incredibly honored to be here on this platform to learn from other teachers and also to share, I guess, some strategies that I have found useful in my classroom. All right, thank you very, very much. So I've got your timer up. You have got five minutes starting yeah. from now. Okay, uh, yeah, you can go ahead. <laughs> Um, so what I'll be sharing today is actually, it's more of um, student well-being. So I think that uh, one of the strongest skills that I have um, is actually the ability to develop good relationships with my students, right? Um, how do I tap into their well-being? How do I uh, know more about them? And I think that has played a very big part uh, in my teaching journey because I feel that it helps me reach out to the toughest kids, right? The kids who don't want to sit down in their in, in the classroom, the kids who don't want to do their work, right? But when I have that relationship with them, um, it becomes easier for me to reach out to them. So I'm just going to share a few strategies. This is what I call a temperature check, which I, I do at the start of every class, right? And these are just things that random pictures that I got from the internet, um, you can you can check it out, it's uh, like feeling posters, mood charts. So some, some of it, like the slides, I design myself. I just choose my favorite character. I get them in different moods. Then I put a number there. So what I do is that at the start of every class, uh, I ask my students, I said, how are you feeling today? Show me a number. And we actually have this um, strategy where I'll be like, okay, ready? One, two, three. And then they, they hit twice and then they show a number just to get everybody, you know, to do it. So they're like, pop, pop, and then they show a number. So um, I'll pick out a few, like, okay, why are you feeling um, like number one? And I don't say like, maybe number one looks happy to them, right? Um, and they, they have the chance to articulate how they actually feel that day. And I find that this really helps. Um, at the start of the year, it's usually very weird for, for the students because most of them are like, why is this teacher... Why does this teacher keep asking me how am I feeling, right? But as time goes by, um, I realize that they, they like it, you know, and before I can even ask them, they're like, teacher, today I feel tired or teacher, today something bad happened to me. And it really encourages a whole sharing session with them. Um, there are times where I do just cut the whole class into half because I want them to talk about um, how they're feeling. And it really helps me set a lot of expectations um, it helps me set expectations for myself and for them because then I don't end up feeling disappointed, you know, when, the, when they're in my class and I'm teaching and no kid is paying attention, at least I know that, okay, they had a rough week maybe, um, they are feeling really tired or there's too much work. So that helps me set the expectations for them. And after a while, I realized that the kids start to take on on it. Um, they start to ask me back, teacher, how are you feeling today? And it's very nice because then I get to be vulnerable with them as well. I get to tell them, like, for example, I said, hey, today I'm actually really tired, you know, and I had such a busy week, right? Um, do you mind if let's just focus on doing some exercise today? Then they're like, yeah, sure, teacher, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So that, that is uh, one of my strategies. Um, you can go to the next one. This is also a temperature check. Um, so like the previous one in the previous slide, I think you can use it more for online, right? So if you're doing a Google Meet, it comes in your slides. Um, you can put it in a Google form. But for this slide, this is more on uh, when things were physical, right? So for the picture on the left, you can see the white stickers. Um, I actually give this to them and they can draw, draw their mood, just like my background. Uh, they can actually draw how they're feeling and then they stick it at the back of their book. And sometimes I, uh, when I'm marking their books, I flip it and I just give a tiny comment or I just tell them like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that and things like that, right? Um, traffic light cards, everybody's super familiar with this, red, green, uh, red, green, and yellow. And I think it just, you can show your mood. Uh, you can use that. You can use numbers. Um, I even put it in their worksheets, okay? Like bulatkan perasaan. So there's like a, for kids who want to feel like cheeky, 
they can um, circle the ninja ninja emoticon so things like that and it just gets them really excited to start a new work yeah so that's all for temperature check we move on to the next one this is some things that I think I got a lot of feedback from other teachers on. Um, they saw it on either my Instagram stories and they, they told me that, hey, this really helps me reach out to the kids, right? So the first one is a Spotify playlist. This is a picture from Pinterest. But I adopted the idea where I get the whole class to write down a list of songs that they like. A song that will get them pumped up. And I make the rules like, okay, no explicit words in this. You know, it has to be either in English. So I put it all in a Spotify playlist. And sometimes when they're doing work, I play their songs. And I think that this idea actually came from when I was reflecting on my own learning, right? I'm thinking that when I study, I like to listen to music, right? So why can't these kids have the same environment? And so I brought that into the classroom. So Every class, I have to have this speaker, I have to have my laptop, or, and I'll play their songs. And surprisingly, this really works because every kid just stays in their, their seat, and they're just like bobbing their heads, doing their work, you know, and it really gets them motivated. And sometimes this can be used um, as either a punishment or a reward. So I can tell them like, okay, like, you know, you guys are too noisy, uh, we'll have to cut on the songs. Then they'll be like, oh, like, you know, or, uh, okay, uh, do, can we can we behave? Can we sit in our class, in our seats, you know, and do our work properly? That they're like, yeah, only if you play us a song. So I say, okay, so it's a give and take. Um, the second picture is what I call Origami Wednesday. Um, I do this a lot for my English classes because I think um, my school started introducing one and a half hours period of uh, English class, and that's really long for a kid to just be continuously learning on the same subject. So what I do is I just pick a random um, origami video and I give them origami papers that you can get at Daiso for like about like 400 pieces for five ringgit, six ringgit. Um, and I give it to them and they all just transform <laughs> into this calm and loving beings. And I love origami Wednesdays with them because I get to see them help each other, you know, I get to see them um, really focus, you know, watch the video and they're very careful. They're very, because they want to get it right. You know, they want to be able to show me at the end of the lesson, like, hey, look, I got the heart, right? And even if they can't, you know, immediately you see their friends reaching out to them like, hey, it's not like this, it's like that because they want to like, you know, take the lead and show. So this is something that um, I really like because it also gives me a time uh, to just relax with them. You know, I thought of doing like breathing exercise and all, but this is more hands-on. And I think just a few days ago, uh, a student texted me and she's like, teacher, you know, I really miss our physical classes. And I was like, yeah, I miss them too. And then she's like, you know what I miss the most? I miss doing origami with you. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's really nice, you know. Uh, so I've even brought that into my online classes. So I'll give them a heads up and say, hey, we're going to have a Google Meet make sure you have a piece, a square piece of paper and we're gonna start it off with origami. And so they all come ready with their piece of paper and we will do a simple origami, not too long, like three to four minutes and then we'll start off the lesson. Okay, and the next slide. Okay, <laughs> so this is two very weird pictures. Um, the one on the right is Kit President. So what I do with him is that I show a lot of his videos in my class. And um, videos are another way to just keep them engaged. Uh, and I love Kid President because he talks about a lot of stuff. He talks about like bullying, talks about kindness, you know, and the kids, they love him because he's so funny and it improves their English just listening to him. So I, I show a lot of videos in, um, in my English class. And the picture on the left, the remote thing, um, it's actually something that I got from Lazada. It's a mini keyboard and I feel like it's an essential for every teacher who uses a PowerPoint because in this mini keyboard, you can actually control um, your slides, you can control, you can type and you can do a lot of things, you know. And the moment I got this, I remember walking in the class and I was like, hey, this is my mini keyboard and all the kids thought I was super cool. <laughs> they thought that I was this like they're like wow teacher that, that that looks like a game boy you know so they're like and then they, they would love to answer a question so 
if they get to answer a question, they get to hold a mini keyboard and actually type it in. So it feels like a game for them, right? And there's actually a, a sensor over there. So you can actually use it to scroll as well. And then the other teachers start noticing this when there were observations. They're like, hey, what's that you have there, you know? So I think that then I start to like buy more and give it as gifts and the teachers love it. Um, so if you're like a PK or you're finding a gift for a teacher, actually, this would be a very good gift. Um, it's only about 17 ringgit that I got from Lazada. And I just felt like, okay, I just need to share this. So yeah. I think that's all for my sharing. Thank you very, very much. I can see a lot of comments um, in, in the boxes, especially about Origami Wednesdays and people wanting to go to school on Wednesdays. Um, but it's, it's really interesting, right, seeing children engage with something where they can concentrate and yeah. where they can be successful. Um, do you, ha, have you managed to replicate that with your online classes? Well, um, yeah, for temperature checks, I've done it. Um, origami, I've done it. Um, then I do show them videos uh, from time to time. But I think like with online classes, I do miss the whole being physical with your students element. I feel like that really bonds us together. And now it's yeah. pretty hot. Um, but one thing that I do try to do is that if let's say I'm giving like a Google form um, to my kids, I make sure that I add in a temperature check just to see how you're doing. Like, how are you coping with the whole pandemic, right? Yeah. Uh, tell me why. Uh, and they share it. And then I reach out to the students who are not doing so good. Like, hey, do you want to talk about it? And things like that. Yeah. And I guess conversations like that come through a relationship of trust and they come through um, a long period of, um, of getting to know children. And I think, I, do, I don't know about you guys, but I found the second school closure to be harder than the first in a lot yes. of ways. Have, have you noticed that with your students? And definitely. I think with the first one, um, I think the students were, everybody was still trying to figure it out, right? Yeah. But with the second one, I think the students just went into this like, oh, I'm done, <laughs> you know? And then with no um, exams, end of the year exams being postponed to next year, they, they just have less urgency to learn. And it was so hard to reach out to them. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, Jasmine, you've got your hand up. Have you got a question? Uh, I, I don't have, a, maybe I have a question and a statement, but like, I just want to say, this is so inspiring and like, you know what, like I, I can just see um, Hayley is always so excited about Teach Me and I can see why. So I actually think you are just giving the students such a good voice and a truthful voice, you know, and, and they are, obviously warming up to you and they actually going beyond what you expected. You know, I listened to every word you said now and you're taking it to another level in Malaysia. So, so thank you so much for that. Thank and you. I think the sharing is important now. I'm just like, oh, we, we need to roll this out to every teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, you know, because you have just gone uh, like above and beyond. So thank, thank you. you so much for this. Because thank you. Like, okay, thank you. Like, you know, some of us are aware of this, but you're actually showing us how it works in action. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jasmine. Thank Hi, uh, Haley. I've got a question for Hilda. <laughs> If you don't mind. Uh, Hilda, thank you so much for that sharing. Uh, I don't know whether it's because I'm hungry, but one of it looks like a cookie that's saying, eat me. Uh, you know, but anyway, um, I just wanted to find out uh, from you, how do you incorporate uh, the vocabulary needed for some of these students to actually express their feelings? Because, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the, the students are feeling a certain emotion, but they do not know exactly how to verbalize that. So is there any strategies that you, you have used? Yes, um, actually, I think I should have included that as well. Um, I have this mood chart. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen a mood chart. I will send it later. Uh, a mood chart actually has like different. So let's say if in happy, right? You have different types of happy, like you're excited, you're, um, I can't really remember, but there are a few words. So these kids, they actually, um, at the start of the year, I've introduced this to them. I printed it out for them, but I don't know if they have it with them anymore, uh, but it can actually be put up on your slides and, they take the time, they're like, teacher, what is agitated, you know, kind of thing. 
So I explained to them, what is the difference between this? And this actually expands, yeah. And sometimes they like to be cheeky. They like to say like, oh, teacher, I am, um, what? Um, for example, if let's say they say agitated, right? I am agitated, you know, kind of thing. And, and then I get them, I'm like, okay, tell me why, you know? Then I say, okay, actually that's not agitated, that it's annoyed or something like that, right? Yeah, then they learn from that. I think I think that's really interesting because English has got a blessing and a curse with the number of yeah. synonyms we have for things, but they're right. very subtle. The the other, um, have you used the mood tree where there are lots of different blobs of people doing different? That's a really nice um, visual poster as well, which you start to see the subtleties of language yeah. because it's it, emotional vocabulary is incredibly difficult even for adults sometimes to try and articulate. So getting the students into that that way of describing exactly how they're feeling, um, yeah. it takes time though, right? It does, it does. And sometimes, I guess sometimes at the start of it, you feel like giving up, you feel like just going straight into your lesson. Um, but I've seen the benefits of it. I think I've seen how this has worked um, over my first year in teaching. And I think that that's something I want to hold on to. Excellent. Thank you very, very much for that. And I think it's a testament to uh, routine and commitment and to using things again and again to make sure that things work, to have the very, very few ideas happen immediately. It takes time. So thank you very much for sharing those things.